There are items in RuneScape that require thousands of hours of grinding to earn, but for about two hours, you could receive those same items in about a minute, every minute. And Jagex let everyone keep them, twice. It was so bad, it even made RuneScape's best PVMer quit the game. And today, you'll see why. This all starts back in 2004, when Jagex introduced a new piece of jewelry to the game called the Ring of Wealth. Despite its somewhat high price tag and flashy name, it wasn't really all that useful. I'd even go as far as to call it useless, but players sure thought it was amazing at the time. That may sound a bit confusing, so let me explain. In RuneScape, there's something called the Rare Drop Table. Most medium to high level monsters have the chance to drop items from the Rare Drop Table when they die. On this table, there's things like uncut gems, parts of the crystal key, a few rune items, and a few dragon items. Now, the chance of receiving a drop from the rare drop table when killing a monster is rare, so these were meant to be a nice little kind of valuable surprise for players back in the day, whereas today, most of us will get one and just sigh. Now, this is where the Ring of Wealth comes in. The ring's only purpose is to increase the chances of receiving a drop from the rare drop table while you're wearing it. But if any of you were around in 2004, you'll know that Jagex used to be much less careful with their wording on update posts. On the post they made when it released, they simply said that the Ring of Wealth gives the wearer a greater chance of getting a rare item drop when they kill a monster, which you now know isn't true. The ring doesn't help with every rare drop in the game. It only helps with items on the rare drop table, which ironically, 99% of rare items are not on. Let's say you were trying to kill the cow fight queen for a dragon chain body. It drops one on average every one in 128 kills. That's a pretty rare item. So after reading this update post, you'd assume that you should bring a ring of wealth along to get it faster. But the dragon chain body isn't on the rare drop table, so the ring wouldn't actually help you at all. Because Jagex worded that post so poorly, and most players didn't even know the rare drop table existed, everyone thought the ring would improve their chances of getting any rare item they wanted from a monster. Over the next few years, hundreds of thousands of players would keep the ring of wealth in their ring slot at all times because of this. Eventually, rumors even spread that it helped you with clue scroll rewards, PvP drops, and the Barrow's reward chest. Even when Mod Ash got on the official RuneScape forums and dispelled these rumors multiple times, they didn't stop. I actually got tricked by these rumors too. When Old School RuneScape launched, I wore a Ring of Wealth at all times for four years, because I genuinely thought that's how it worked. But that might be because in RuneScape 2 in 2011, Jagex decided to change the Ring of Wealth to work much more like how the rumors suggested it did. Except whoever updated it messed up really, really, really bad. But first, let's discuss today's sponsor, Dragonair Silent Gods. You can click the link in the description box to download the game and join D&D Legends and Dragonair. It's an open world strategy RPG with a Western fantasy theme and was actually inspired by Dungeons and Dragons, the world's most popular tabletop role-playing game. So far, Dragonair has garnered over 10 million downloads worldwide, securing the top spot in more than 10 regions since its global launch and is available on Windows, Mac, Steam, Epic, and Android and iOS. Now, on November 17th, Dungeons & Dragons characters Driz Do Erden and Air 2 were added to the game, and more are on the way in future seasonal content releases. During this collaboration, Driz and his Black Panther, Guenevar, have their own independent and complete storylines you can play through. You'll be happy to know that Dragonair includes tons of D&D mechanics you know and love dice roll checks, unique character creation, and tactical grid-based battle. So if this all sounds good to you, click the link in the description box to download the game and join D&D Legends in Dragonair. So on March 15th, 2011, Jagex made what should have been a fairly standard update to the Ring of Wealth. They made it so the ring could teleport you to the Grand Exchange and Miscellanea, and allowed the ring to actually increase your chance of receiving a rare item from a boss. 
boss. So if you were fighting General Grador, for example, you'd have a slightly higher chance of receiving one of his very rare unique items like a Bandos chest plate. This effect would also apply to opening reward caskets from Clue Scrolls, the Barrow's rewards chest, and more. So pretty much exactly how the ring was rumored to work, except without the PvP drop increase part. But players soon learned that Jagex had seemingly launched this update without testing it. Right after it went live and players started killing monsters while wearing the ring, they noticed that they were getting its most valuable drops every single time. So spiritual mages normally drop dragon boots at a rate of 1 in 128. Instead, you would get them every single kill. This sounds almost unbelievably insane, but one player named T.S. Jan was actually able to catch it on video. In just a few minutes, he had 40 pairs. He could have gotten more, but Jan came to this area to fight Krill Tutsaroth, which requires you to kill 40 Zamorak minions before entering his lair. So he enters the lair, gets a kill, and expects to get something super rare, right? But he doesn't. He just gets rune plate legs. That's where this glitch gets sort of weird. It seemed that for certain monsters, you'd get their most valuable drop every time, while with others, you would just significantly increase your chances. But smart clans soon figured out a trick to make every monster drop a rare item every time. Back then, clans in RuneScape had a system called Loot Share. If Loot Share was turned on, everyone in the clan would share in the loot from monsters that they killed together. This system would try and share the loot as equally as possible. So what happened next is clans would turn on loot share, get 10 or 15 players together, and start killing the corporeal beast. If they were all wearing a ring of wealth, the ring's effect would stack, meaning they were getting corpse most valuable items, sigils, every single drop. Now, loot share did a good job of distributing these sigils to players who hadn't received one yet, but clans could also turn on coin share, so every sigil was automatically converted into coins and split evenly between everyone who helped with the kill. In this one clip of a player in a clan that had coin share on, his inventory goes from having 3.7 million GP to 79 million in under four minutes. Everyone was here for the Divine Spirit sigil, which at the time was trading at nearly 1 billion GP due to how in demand it was. But some players reported that while this glitch was happening, so many divines entered the game that it dipped as low as 150 to 300 mil. With rumors like that, it soon became full on chaos. Clan members were begging their high ranking members to be allowed to join in, and players who they disliked were being kicked from the clan so they didn't get any wealth. Pretty soon, dozens of clans were doing this, and billions of GP was entering the game every single minute. In total, the glitch is believed to have run for roughly two hours before Jagex noticed and patched it. Although extensive damage must have been done to the game's economy, Jagex would just roll back the game to two hours ago and erase the damage, right? Right? Well, no. Soon after the glitch was patched, Modmark would make a statement on the forums that not only would the game not be getting rolled back, everyone who participated in it would not be punished. He said that they chose to do this because it supposedly didn't significantly affect the economy that much. But we'll get to that in a bit. I have some actual numbers we can take a look at. But you might be wondering, why not at least ban the players who abused the glitch? Tens of thousands of players have been banned for doing much less. Well, Mark explains that it's because players expected the Ring of Wealth to affect these drops. They expected to receive high value drops more often and can't really be blamed for the actions taken around this time because of it. Which kind of makes sense. An update to a ring meant to make you get more valuable drops would get you more valuable drops. Except that everyone abusing this glitch knew it was a glitch. You can even see players admitting they knew it was a glitch in chat in these videos. So you can probably understand why everyone else in the community was extremely salty about Jagex's decision. As usual, riots broke out in game, the forums were on fire, and this time, an unexpected community member stepped up to voice his complaints. Wook16, or just Wooks as he goes by now, is well known as one of the best PVMers in RuneScape history, even back then, and he was was increasingly getting more frustrated with Jagex. They went back on their promise 
promise to give high level forum members free memberships for participating in Jagex workshops. Botters were taking over the game and not being banned. And he had just maxed his account, so he was becoming kind of bored. He was actually considering quitting the game when his membership ran out later that month. Then this whole ring of wealth bug happened and it solidified his decision. In an interview released on the same day of the glitch, Wooks disagreed with Jagex's decisions, saying that they should have rolled back the game and he felt like he could no longer trust the company. Luckily for us, Wooks later returned. But did the bug really not affect the economy that much? Was Jagex telling the truth or was this another climbing boots situation? Actually, yeah, they weren't lying. Despite billions worth of sigils entering the game, none of them dipped in price on the Grand Exchange. In fact, most of them went up the next day. As long as it never happens again, I guess that's fine. Except it did. In March of 2017, Jagex was doing a big rework of the luck system, and along with introducing new rings that also slightly increased your luck at certain bosses, they broke the luck system entirely. This time, it was only limited to the bosses in God Wars Dungeon, Corp, the Cowfight King, and the Wildy Worm, but had a pretty similar effect as last time. Players get lots of drops, Jagex fixes it, there's no rollback, and everyone is upset. However, this time they did choose to ban some players that they were 100% certain were abusing it. It was also a bit easier to tell this time because the glitch didn't last for two hours. It lasted for six, and they hopefully went through chat logs this time. I don't know about you, but this glitch makes me pretty nostalgic, and the video I made about Fat Wrecked over on the right is probably even more nostalgic. He was one of RuneScape's most famous YouTubers, but he died when he was just 18, and what happened after will shock you.